It's like these amazing blessings all along the way. When you stick with God, there are perks. Do you know what Matthew 6.33 says? It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be what? Added. Added. So it's like, just like the Happy Meal, they didn't just put in double fries, which they never did that. Double fries. Is that like a special Happy Meal? They always give extra fries? You order it. Okay. Well, this one had two fries, chicken nuggets, but then they added something extra. It was like a little perk. You get the Happy Meal, you get the food, great, but then they throw in a toy. When you stick with God, there are things that are added to your life. But what must you do? You must stick with God. If I go to McDonald's and order number four tonight, which I will not do, order number four, I think that's a quarter pounder with cheese, honestly, if it still is, because it used to be. I used to order it. Let's be honest with each, with each other here. I just said number four, and I think it was just like habit. I would order the number four with no onions, I think, because a quarter pounder with cheese comes with onions. But I would say no onions. It, what? They had bacon now. Oh, Lord. I'm not going there. But if I went to McDonald's tonight, and I said, I would like a number four with no onions, please. What would you like to drink? Uh, I don't drink soda, so uh, Powerade or something. Hi, C. Do they do water? You cannot eat that kind of grease with water. What about a Gatorade or something? Yeah, I'll have that. So if I go and order the number four with with no um, quarter pounder with cheese, no onions. Like y'all, please look up. Is that still the number four quarter pounder with cheese on the menu? I think it is. Yeah. Look it up, Alex. It is. Cause this will be like y'all, you know I ordered it a lot of, for years later, at least 15 years since it's been to McDonald's. So I order the quarter pounder with cheese. I get up there, I get my bag. Bro, I tell the guy at the window, where is my toy. What is he going to say? You didn't order Happy Meal. You're at McDonald's. You got the same kind of grease fried fries. You got the same kind of meat and, and bun, but you didn't order the Happy Meal. Here's the thing. If you don't stick with God, you're not going to see these perks in your life. Do you understand that? Just because you're a believer, just because you showed up, doesn't mean you're sticking with him. Because you sticking with him requires you to, just like Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, or in other words, if you want to follow me, what did he say you must do? You must deny self, take up your cross, and follow me. If I go to McDonald's and I want a toy, there's something that I have to order. I have to order a Happy Meal. If I want the perks that are available for me as a believer, then I've got to stick with God. Just coming to church isn't going to do it for you. Y'all, there's a lot of people that just go to church. But sticking with God, taking what you hear at church and then really applying it to your life. You hear at church, children, Ephesians 5.1, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. You just hearing that, does that mean you're sticking with God? No. no, that hearing the word created faith to live out the word. But what do you still have to do? When your mom says clean your room, what do you have to do? You have to obey. That's what it means to stick with God. Not just hearing the word. When you hear the word, there's all the faith you need to do the word. But you have to actually do the word. Just like when I pull up to McDonald's, there's an opportunity for me to order a Happy Meal. Okay, you don't go to McDonald's and they say we're out of Happy Meals. There's going to be a Happy Meal on the menu and there's going to be a toy in that Happy Meal, period. It's going to happen. But I have to order that. Just because I go to McDonald's does not mean I automatically get the toy. Just because you come to church and you know what to do and you receive the faith to do it by hearing the word doesn't mean you're sticking with God. You have to make a decision to do the word. Sticking with God has perks. Everyone say that. Sticking with God has perks. It's just like extras. Whenever I order a Happy Meal, I don't have to say, hey, I want a Happy Meal and I want a toy. Guess what's automatically going to be in there? 
the toy. Well, there are some things that are automatically available for you as you stick with God. Now, what does it mean to stick with God? It means to stick with the word and stick with love. Sticking with God means sticking with the word and sticking with love. Sticking with God means sticking with the word and sticking with love. This is in my thoughts. If, a thought, if I have a thought that says I'm ugly and I think about it and think about it and think about it, is that sticking with God? No, what would be a thought that says, I'm not sticking with that, I'm sticking with God? What thought comes against that one? Willow. A carnal thought. No, that is a carnal thought. That's not a right thought. But what is a thought that says, I'm sticking with God? Ryan? Right. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. So I have to choose that. Can God go in there and say, er, take this thought out, put this thought in? I have to do that, right? I have to, just like if I go to McDonald's, if I want a toy with my meal, then what do I got to order? I have to order a Happy Meal. God is a God of order, and he has established perks for your life. But if you're not, just like if you're not on the road, then you're not going to step into it. It's like, you know, have you ever played like those games where it's like Mario or whatever, or Donkey Kong? I used to really like Donkey Kong. So you would run and you would get the bananas. Well, if the bananas were up top and I didn't jump, am I getting the bananas just because I'm going under them? No. No, I've got to run through them, right? I've got to run through the bananas. I've got to capture the bananas. The same is true. Just because you came to church, you hear the word. There's faith to do the word, but what do you have to do? You have to do it. And when you do the word, there are perks. So is number four a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh, they changed it then. It's a number three now. I don't even know if they had chicken sandwich back then. 15 years ago, guys? It was a long time. All right, let's go in our Bibles to Matthew 5, 6. This is what we're going to be looking at all week long because sticking with God gives me perks. Sticking with God. Everyone say it. Sticking with God gives me perks. There's just like extra good stuff when I stick with God. There's extra good stuff when I stick with God. Yes, I'm going to have divine health. I'm going to walk in prosperity. I'm going to walk in peace. All of these things. And then there's even extra, extra perks for sticking with God. And what does sticking with God mean? Who can tell me? Raise your hand. Sticking with God means sticking with what, Ryder? Sticking with what? Sticking with God sticking means sticking with, with the, the word. The word and major. Do you know the other one? God um, is. Who said it? Love. Love. Good job. Sticking with God means sticking with the word. Sticking with love. And when I stick with Him, y'all, you cannot fail when you do the word. You cannot fail when you do the word. You cannot fail when you do the word. When you're a giver, you can't fail. When you're grateful, you can't fail. When you're obedient, you can't fail. You cannot fail doing the word. Jesus did the word. Did Jesus fail? No, he was successful. He even went to hell. He went where no man had gone before and come out of. He did it. Why? Because what did he do? He just heard the word. He stuck with God. He actually did it. So look what it says in Matthew 5, 6. Matthew 5, 6. Who's there? And you can read it for me. Micaiah, will you read it for me, baby? Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for what's going to happen? They shall be filled. That means I'm going to walk in the perks. But what do I have to do? There's perks available, but I have to do what? Blessed are those who what? Hunger and thirst. I have to stick with God. That's my part. Say, I'm going to stick with God, and I'm going to enjoy the perks. Say, I'm going to stick with God, and I'm going to enjoy the perks. 
You know, whenever you fly, there's a first class ticket that you can purchase. Well, in first class, there's more room. The stewardess give you more food. There's more available to you in first class. But what do you have to do? You have to purchase a first class ticket. There's more available if you purchase it. Now, Jesus paid the price for all the perks. I don't have to pay anything. All I have to do is stick with God. And because I stick with God, I get to enjoy the perks. Say, I'm going to stick with God. So this is the perk we're talking about tonight. The perk we're talking about tonight, if you're taking notes, write this down, is I will be in the right place at the right time. Can we make a slide like that? This is the perk. I will be in the right place at the right time. And this is a big deal. Because sometimes there's been believers that because they're not sticking with God, they're not hearing his voice, or they hear his voice and they don't obey, they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. And as a believer, this is a perk for me. The Bible says that all things have been revealed to us by the Spirit. We don't have to be caught off guard. We don't have to wonder what we should do. Do you know why? This is a perk. Just like whenever I get a Happy Meal, what's going to be in the Happy Meal? A toy. Whenever I hear the word and I do the word, I decide I'm going to stick with God. Then I don't have to wonder, well, God, what is God going to do? You know, people say, well, God is mysterious. He works in mysterious ways. We never know what God's going to do. Well, someone that says that, what does that tell me? They don't have a relationship with who? God. They don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the revealer of not just some truth, but all truth. He'll show you exactly what, this is a perk. Say, this is a perk. This is a perk. I will be in the right place at the right time every time. I say that prayer as a part of my prayer every morning. Father God, I thank you that I'm in the right place at the right time every time. Why? Because in the right place at the right time every time, there could be someone that needed a word from the Lord and I'm going to give it to him. There could be someone that I need to give to. There could be someone that God has orchestrated to be in that place that's going to give to me. Whatever it is, God, I'm going to be at the right place at the right time every time. This is a perk. It's kind of like this soccer ball. What, what, what um, goal gets the point with this soccer ball? This one? No. This one. Uh, no. What is it? What is going to get me? Wow. What is going to get me a goal? The, the, what is it? The soccer goal, right? That got me a point. That was the right place. That was the right place for that. Now, what is the right place for this? Let me see if some of you boys can make a field goal. You're not kicking, you're throwing. You... Let me see, I need someone to throw it. Nicholas! Zachary, I apologize, Zach. I apologize. I saw your brother earlier, that's why it's in my mind. Let's see, do you think you can make this goal? You're just going to throw it, don't kick it, because that could be crazy. Jaden, you got to be prepared to, to catch it, okay? So here we go. Ooh, touchdown. That was the right one. Now, if he took this football, come over here. Come back, come back, come back. If he took this football, and this happened to be on the field that day, and so instead of, of throwing it through there, or kicking it through there, you kicked it through here. Go, go for it, do it. Does that get you any points? No, it's the wrong ball. Right? This ball has a certain place. Thank you so much, buddy. You are awesome. This ball has a certain place. Well, guess what? You have a certain place at a certain time. You have a certain place at a certain time. This is a perk. A perk as a believer that sticks with God is you are in the right place at the right time, receiving exactly what you need to receive. Do you know each of you had a place to be tonight? And you're in the right place. You decided to come to church. You decided to hear the word. Say, I'm in the right place right now. But guess what? Whenever you leave tonight, you have to believe that you're going to be in the right place at the right time. 
And then tomorrow, before you come to summer internship, or if you're not in summer internship, whenever you're at um, summer recess or wherever you are, you have to believe, God, God, I'm going to be in the right place at the right time. I'm going to hear your voice because I know every moment of every day, there's a place for me. And in that place, there's victory. This football goes where? Through the field goal. That basketball goes where? Come on, bring out your old junior high. Hey, 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 hey. Give it up for Jaden. She was a basketball star in junior high. Each of these, each of these have a place. Say, I've got a place. And a perk of being a believer is being in the right place at the right time. You don't have to wonder, well, should I go there? Should I do that? See, we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he's the revealer of truth, and he will show you exactly where to go and what to do. Just like whenever the Twin Towers, y'all were not even born yet, but do y'all remember the twin, the World Trade Sitters that the planes crashed into? Well, on that day, there was several believers that worked in those towers, and the Spirit of God told them, don't go to work, and it didn't make sense. They weren't sick. They weren't like, you know, just being lazy. It wasn't like, oh, I don't want to go to school. Don't I? No, it was like there was something on the inside of them that said, don't go to work. And you always know it's the spirit of God when there's not fear attached. There's just an urgency. If there's fear attached, guess what? You better get your butt to work because that's the enemy. Fear, the enemy uses. The spirit of God is the revealer of truth, of peace. He leads through peace not through fear. And so these people were like, I'm, I'm not going to go to work today. And because they didn't go to work that day, guess what happened? They didn't die. They're still alive. Or they didn't have to go through all of that trauma of seeing all those other people die. See, I have a perk as a believer that sticks with God. And that perk is I'm in the right place at the right time every time. So whenever God tells me to do something, I do it, even if it doesn't make sense. It's kind of like the disciples. Let's go in our Bibles really quick. Let's look at Luke, Luke, Luke 5. Look what it says, this story. Look what happened. It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, I'm reading verse 1, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. So they were done. Say they were done. Because they're washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, which is Peter, and prayed that he would thrust him out. So take me out a little, because they didn't have a stage like this. So it was like, Jesus needed to get some distance so he could yell, hello, hello, right? Look at me, right? So then they're preaching the word, they're listening. Do we see the picture in our heads? And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, he told him to go out, and he sat down and he taught the people. When he left speaking, so he was done preaching, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon said to him, look what Simon said, master, we've toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your, what does it say? Nevertheless, at your, word. nevertheless, at your word. word, I will let down the net. See, we see here, Peter deciding, even though this doesn't make sense, the fishermen would fish at night. That's where the fish would swim into the net because guess what? They didn't see the net. They couldn't see it. It was dark. So if the net's down at night, then the fish are going to swim in and they get caught in the net. But during the day, the fish see the net. And so it's just like, they're like, right, I'm not going into the net. I'm going to go a different way. And so Peter's like, bro, this doesn't make sense. We fished all night. Like, and nighttime was the time for fishing. But what did he say? But nevertheless, at your word. See, what does sticking with God mean? Sticking with God means sticking with the word and love. and love and the love of God. And so Peter decided, even though this does not make sense, I'm going to stick with God. Why? Because he wanted to be at the right place at the right time. There's a perk for a believer, and that's to be at the right place at the right time. But if you're not sticking with God, then guess what happens? If he didn't go out into, into the deep and lay down his nets, would he have been at the right place? 
No, he would have gone the rest of the day without any fish. It would have just been the same. Now, would he have lost his business and everything would have crashed? Maybe not, but he missed out. I don't want to miss out on a perk. If I order a Happy Meal, bless God, you better get me my toy. Why? Because a toy comes in a Happy Meal. As a believer, I don't want to miss out on perks because I'm lazy or because I think there's a better way to do it. I want to trust in God. When I stick with God, there are perks. So look what happened. Peter stuck with God. He said, nevertheless, at your word. So instead of how he would do things, he didn't stick with how he would do things. He stuck with God. And look what happened. When Simon Peter saw it, it says, they, be they beckoned unto their ships. They, sorry, let's go back to verse six. When they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net broke. Their net broke. There was so many fish, and this was during the day. See, what God wants to do in and through your life, it's not going to make sense to your mind. That's why the believer, the, the just walk by faith. We live by faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. So when you stick with God, you get like inside information. You find out what you need to do, where you need to go. Just like whenever we're at or nights, whenever we're at our outreach night, the spirit of God says, hey, you need to go to this Allsup's. There's a girl with pink hair and she's depressed. And what happens? You go to Allsup's and there's a girl with pink hair who is depressed and needed a word. See, that doesn't just happen because you've come to church. It happens because you hear the word and then you've got the faith. Once you hear the word, the faith is there to do it. But what do you have to do? What do you have to do? You have to do it. This is a perk. If I want a toy at McDonald's, what do I have to order? Y'all, I have to order a Happy Meal. If I want the perk of being in the right place at the right time, I just got to stick with God. I just got to stick with God. When my parents tell me to do something, I'm sticking with God. So what do I do? I do it. I obey. Whenever the Spirit of God tells me to give, what do I do? I give. When the Spirit of God tells me to give my friend a pencil that I just got, and it was my favorite pencil, but the Spirit of God told me to do it, what do I do? I just do it. So what am I doing? I'm creating this pattern of sticking with God. So then whenever I'm about to go to a party, a birthday party, whatever the Holy Spirit says, hey, you don't need to go to that, I say, okay, what do I do? I obey. I'm not going to that party. And then because I don't go to that party, I miss out on whatever it is that they watched, whatever it is they talked about that I don't have to deal with. See, you will be in the right place at the right time every time, but you've got to stick with God. This is a perk. There's a place for you every single day, just like this soccer ball. Where does it go? It goes in that goal. Every single day, there's a place for you to be. There's a place for you to be in your head. There's a place for you to be in your heart. And there's a place for you to be in your body. And you've got to be in that place because God has something for you or he has something that he wants to get through you. Deborah is another woman. She was in her place. And instead of reading her story, we're gonna watch her story. So take a look at Deborah, and I want you to notice what place she was in. Take a look at this. God's story, Deborah. So part of God's story is about a woman named Deborah. And it goes like this. God's special family was in some trouble. You see, Israel had started to turn away from God and stop following him. But because God loved his family, he wanted to send them a reminder that he was in charge and that it was really important to follow him. And so God allowed Jabin, the king of Canaan, to take over Israel. Now Jabin had left Sisera, the commander of his armies, in control of Israel. And Sisera, well, he wasn't exactly the nicest guy. In fact, the Bible tells us that he had over 900 iron chariots which meant he was really powerful and he loved to bully the Israelites. The Israelites tried to resist, but they couldn't do it on their own. After 20 long years of trying to rescue themselves, Israel cried out to God and asked him to rescue them. Kids, it's always a good idea to ask for God's help. Even though God was king of his family, he chose people to lead them. They were called judges. One judge was named Deborah. She was also a prophet. Remember, a prophet is someone who hears from God and shares it. Deborah was a strong, powerful woman who listened to God, helped settle arguments among the Israelites, and worked to lead her nation back to their rescuer. Pretty cool, huh? And she had a message from God. He had heard the cries of the Israelites. 
So Deborah sent for a man named Barak and told him that if he took 10,000 men up to a place called Mount Tabor, she would bring Commander Sisera to him. Then they could stop Sisera from bullying Israel. But Barak wasn't so sure. In fact, he was pretty worried. He said that he would only go if Deborah would come with him. Deborah told Barak not to worry because God was going to deliver Commander Sisera not through him, but through the hands of a woman. Barak obeyed and gathered his men at Mount Tabor. But when Sisera heard about this new army, he rushed out to battle them with all 900 chariots rumbling along the ground. Now, Deborah could have been scared, but she knew God was with her. She said, get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera, for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak and his men charged Sisera and his army. The soldiers went forward and with God's help, defeated Sisera's chariots. Every one of his soldiers were killed. So Sisera went running for his life. He ran to a tent owned by a woman named Jael and asked her to hide him. She agreed and covered him with a blanket. He was pretty tired from all that running. So inside the tent, he fell asleep. When Barak arrived at the camp, Jael led him to Sisera's body. Just like Deborah had prophesied, Sisera had been delivered to Barak through the hands of a woman. With Sisera gone, God led his special family in battle after battle until Jabin, king of all of Canaan, had to surrender before the little nation of Israel. After that, Deborah and Barak burst into song, praised God, and celebrated how God had saved his family. And then there was peace for 40 years. And that's the story of Deborah. You notice what happened with Deborah. What was her place? What was her place in the, in the, in, with all the Israel? She was a prophetess, right? She had a place. This was her place. Her place was to tell the people like she was a judge. She helped people deal with their issues. If there was strife, she would do that. And then she would hear from God and she would deliver it to the people. She had a place. Now, when Barak came to her and said, hey, what do we do? She said, I already told you. God said to go to war. And he said, well, I'm not going unless you go. And guess what she did? She went with them. And then what did they do? They conquered him. But one guy got away. And so then there was another woman that was in her place. And that woman in her place, when the little scared man ran, ran, ran away, this little piggy ran home, he ran to her tent. She, he fell asleep, she covered him up, and then stuck a thing through, her, through his temple. A nail, a stake, like those big, have y'all seen them like on train tracks? Like it's a big, like that woman, she was like, bam, and he's like, ooh, right? He's done skis. But if Deborah wouldn't have been in her place, would Barak have been in his place? No, and would that woman have been able to be in her place? No, see, it matters that I'm in my place. It matters that I'm in the right place at the right time every time. Just like the story of Jerry Savelle, whenever he was believing God for a certain amount of money, he knew this is the amount of money that I need. And he was going into a, a conference and there was a whole bunch of ministers and they were very wealthy. And he was thinking, surely this is going to be the guy that gives me the money. And guess what? It wasn't him. Surely this is going to be the guy that gives me the money. Then they're in an elevator and there's a little old granny with a track, purple track jumpsuit that she walks in. And he's like, well, it's not happening today, I guess. So they go up the floors. The woman, the little old woman gets off and then she turns around and eh, holds the elevator, pulls out a check for the amount of money. He was in the right place at the right time. Why? Because that little old woman had already been spoken to by God to give him that money in that elevator. Every moment matters. And so as a believer, when I stick with God, I stick with his word in the private moments, right? Behind closed doors, when no one's watching, whenever I'm on, on my iPad looking at stuff, I stick with God. If something's on that I know I'm not supposed to watch, I don't watch it. Why? Because I want to be in the right place at the right time. And do I just get to have the perk because I showed up? No, I've got to stick with God. The perks are available for the believers that stick with God. And when you hear the word, there's faith to do the word. So I want to encourage you, just like Deborah, just like the disciples that day when they went out fishing, when Peter launched out, you will be in the right place at the right time. And even if it doesn't make sense, say, it doesn't have to make sense. Say, it doesn't even have to be my plan. I'm going to be in the right place at the right time. And why is that? Because that's a perk, and I'm sticking with God.